It is my great privilege to welcome you on this lovely evening to our honorary doctorate degree ceremony here at the Kreitman Plaza of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev. In 1955, David Ben-Gurion said, only researchers and scientists living in the desert through constant observations and examination will reveal what is concealed in the bosom of the earth. They will study the blessing of the sky, the sun and the atmosphere, and endless treasures of energy, dew, winds, and beneficial rays, which go to waste because we do not know how to use them to make the wilderness bloom. Our ceremony this evening celebrates a group of individuals who each in their own way has benefited mankind by making a major contribution to education, to society, and to the world. These people who affect change and create an impact that resounds amongst communities and nations. Dear honorees, your action and accomplishments are models and inspiration for all of us here tonight. We are proud and delighted to have you join our family of distinguished honorary doctorates, and we look forward to welcoming you on many future occasions to begin Ben-Gurion University of the Negev. Thank you very much. The earliest honorary degree on record was awarded to Lionel Woodwill in the late 1470s by the University of Oxford. He later became Bishop of Salisbury. Comedian Bill Cosby garnered over 100 of them. The strangest honorary doctorate ever was awarded to Kermit the Frog <laughs> by the Stony Brook campus of State University of New York. His theme, It's Not Easy Being Green, has become a rallying cry of the environmental movement. As in every year, Bangor University is proud to invite distinguished people from all over the world and honor them with this prestigious award in recognition of their deeds for science, culture, and humanity. John Quincy Adams, United States sixth president, said, if your action inspires others to doing more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Today, all the recipients of the honorary doctorate are leaders and role models. You bestow the great honor upon us by accepting our honorary doctorate award. Thank you very much. Sir Martin Gilbert, whom we have the great pleasure of listening to this afternoon, is known and respected worldwide as an outstanding historian and scholar. As the official biographer of Sir Winston Churchill, he read every page of an estimated 15 tons in weight of documentation. Is that true? He has written more than eight books, many of which are recognized as classic works. He is an honorary fellow of Merton College, Oxford, and tonight joined the family of Ben-Gurion University. Sir Martin, we are deeply honored by your presence today here. Sir Martin Gilbert, one of our generation's most famous historians, whose contribution to the study of Zionism and the Holocaust is so outstanding your research and your support are twice as important now that too many voices in academia in general and in the UK in particular are advocating a boycott against Israeli academia. Special thank you. I call upon the Right Honorable Sir Martin Gilbert to please rise and approach the podium. The justifications for granting the degree are found in the scroll which reads, the Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor the Right Honorable Sir Martin Gilbert in recognition of a leading historian of the modern world, one of the most prominent researchers of 20th century political and military history, whose penetrating vision and original thinking set down the essential foundations for studying international relations, thus facilitating our understanding of developments unfolding today. In acknowledgement of the author of numerous scholarly books on a broad range of subjects that provide a rich mine of information for future generations, including the official biography of Sir Winston Churchill and pioneering historical atlases. 
with esteem for a highly regarded lecturer, an expert in the study of Zionism and contemporary Israel and of the Holocaust era, who has mentored many students and researchers, and who was made a commander of the Order of the British Empire and later awarded a knighthood, who has loyally served his country as a member of the official governmental commission of inquiry into the war in Iraq, and as a representative at the United Nations Human Rights Commission in Geneva, and in deep appreciation of a loyal friend of the State of Israel, who has provided an enduring voice for those whose stories would otherwise not have been told. By conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The Rector will now confer the hood. The President will present the scroll. I first came here to meet David Ben-Gurion 41 years ago when he spoke to me about his time in London during the Blitz and about the many dramatic turning points in his life. In 1984 I came here to Ben-Gurion University with Avital Sharansky to speak about her husband who was then incarcerated in the Soviet Union and the support of Ben-Gurion University for that campaign was considerable. Each time I come to Beersheba, I pay my respects at the Commonwealth War Graves Commission Cemetery, in which lie 1,173 of those who gave their lives that Palestine might be freed from Ottoman rule and become the Jewish national home. Now I'm here to celebrate with you the achievements of this great university, about whom I have many times heard the praises sung by my publisher and friend, Lord Weidenfeld. The world of academia knows no borders. It rises above petty quarrels of the small-minded. It is also often the subject, as Professor Cohen said a moment ago, of boycott. Nothing could be more unwise. If there are grievances in the world, and there are many, let the universities be the forum for discussion, not conflict, for understanding, not division, for harmony, not hatred. Thank you so much for bestowing this honorary degree upon me. It means a great deal to any historian to be given such an accolade and in such distinguished company. It will serve not merely as a source of personal pride, but as a spur and encouragement to me for future endeavors. Thank you. Professor Franz N. Cordova is an internationally recognized astrophysicist whose scientific contribution has already been recognized by NASA and is a recipient of their highest honor. Her contribution, however, reached far beyond this, and we recognize tonight a woman who has given greatly to society through science, technology, innovation, invention, and education. An outstanding woman and a role model. Professor Cordova, we are so proud to have you with us tonight. Professor Franz N. Cordova, who is a noted astrophysicist, has shown that the sky is not the limit, who served as a role model in her strive for academic excellence, equality, and social justice, and for her never-ending efforts to advance the cause of women and minorities in academia. Thank you. I now call upon Professor Franz N. Cordova to please rise and approach the podium. These are the justifications for granting the degree. The Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Professor Franz Ann Cordova in appreciation of a highly regarded academic, president of Purdue University, Indiana, who has guided the institution toward academic excellence, pluralism, equality, and social justice. In honor of a brilliant award-winning researcher in the field of astrophysics, a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, who was appointed the youngest ever chief scientist at NASA, and who won the organization's highest honor, the Distinguished Service Medal. In acknowledgement of a dedicated teacher who has devoted her time to educating the next generation of scientists while serving in key academic positions, 
working indefatigably to raise the quality of education and the training of science teachers. In recognition of her endeavors in public service, including her work as a consultant in the fields of science and education, and with gratitude to an influential leader among the Hispanic community in the United States who has made a significant contribution to the promotion of students for minorities and women in academia by providing equal opportunities for all people to achieve their goals. By conferring upon her the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The rector will now confer the hood. The president will present the scroll. I'm honored to be here, and it's a privilege to receive recognition from this prestigious university with such an accomplished president. I share Dr. Carmi's aspirations for our institutions to improve the world through research and scientific exploration. Only by pressing the frontiers of knowledge through discovery, innovation, and collaboration can we find solutions to the grand challenges that face our world. The challenges are profound. Hunger, education, and disease are among them. Institutions of higher learning are a central source of inquiry, research, and applications to address these challenges. Through our discoveries and innovations in the sciences, technology, industry, engineering, and agriculture, we will ease the burdens of humanity. And through education, we will provide a foundation upon which our young people can build their dreams. I first came to Israel as a student. I met Jerusalem's beloved mayor, Teddy Kollek. I returned to the US to write an article about Israel for a national magazine entitled Shalom, We Echo Shalom. My second visit to Israel was as chief scientist for NASA when I was honored to meet with President Weizmann and the head of the Israeli Space Agency. I'm proud that my third visit as the president of Purdue University and that I share something else in common with President Carmi. We both stand at the helm of great institutions from which the next generation of leaders will emerge. Thank you again for this high honor. Hail BGU. Shalom. Shalom. Sir Stephen Wally Cohen is a businessman and active member of the board of a number of charities whose activities range from medical research to bringing young people to the theater who would otherwise not have the opportunity. As president since 1992 of the ICA Foundation, he has led the concerted activities in the development of the Galilei and the Negev, and we at Ben Gurion University are fortunate to be part of his vision for the future of Israel. Thank you, Sir Stephen, for your commitment to this region and to the country. Sir Stephen Whaley Cohen, I'll start with you for two reasons. The first is that both of us are Cohen. The second is that I'm a proud beneficiary of an ICA research seed money grant. You may want to know that as a consequence of this grant, we got a major grant from Thailand's uh, national oil company and even a larger one of several million euros from the EU together with uh, another 10 uh, groups uh, all over Europe. This is to show you that ICA support could be crucial to the success of proposals which are not yet ripe to be submitted to other funds. ICA's contribution is indeed making a significant impact on desert research. Thank you. I now call upon Sir Stephen Whaley Cohen to please rise and approach the podium. The justifications for granting the degree are found in a scroll which reads, the Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Sir Stephen Whaley Cohen in appreciation of a man who began his career as a financial journalist and went on to found a thriving publishing group 
a successful entrepreneur and owner of leading theatres in the United Kingdom who has left his mark on the cultural world. In acknowledgement of the chairman of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, who has produced renowned plays, including the world's longest running show, The Mousetrap. With esteem for the initiator of projects that provide new opportunities for thousands of young people in the UK and elsewhere, driven by his fervent belief in their ability to realize their potential. In honor of a man who harnessed his talents on behalf of the State of Israel and who as chairman of ICA contributes significantly to the development of the Negev and the Galilee by promoting agriculture, rural tourism, education and scientific research. And in deep gratitude to a true friend for his active involvement in fostering higher education in the periphery and for his support of Ben Gurion University of the Negev for the benefit of the residents of arid zones in Israel and around the world by conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The rector will confer the hood and the president will present the scroll. I'm honored to be invited as Dr. Whaley Cohen to address you. I first heard of Israel at the age of about four when my father used to return from visits here bringing El Al's wonderful lollipops. <laughs> he was visiting in his capacity as chairman of the Palestine Corporation in which he had succeeded his father who started it in the 1930s. Ica's involvement goes back much longer than that. And the honor you do me this evening in giving me this degree is one I believe belongs equally to my fellow council members on the ICA Charitable Foundation and to its management. I want particularly to mention the work and the vision of my fellow honoree of previous years, Yehiel Admoni, and of our manager, Yoki Lotan. I've been president of ICA for almost 19 years. And during this time, with the help of my colleagues, our grants have risen steadily and increased, uh, achieved, I believe, an increasing impact. During the time, the way we've worked has changed. We've worked to be more innovative and more catalytic, have less bureaucracy. We've always tried to be more than just the money, as uh, the rector described. We've effectively provided mentoring and help as well as financial support. Everything we do is in the periphery in the north and south of the country, much of it in applied agricultural research. It's all designed to help those who want to live in the remoter rural areas. This is our attempt at a contemporary interpretation of the wishes of our founder and our benefactor, Baron Morris de Hirsch, one of the great heroes, uh, unknown to him, of course, of Israel. He wanted Jews to settle on the land, and that's why for the first hundred years of our existence, we were called the Jewish Colonization Association. Nothing to do with colonies, except that the Latin word colonus means farmer. Our aim is to help Jews in rural areas to make a decent living from farming or otherwise. And we support schools and colleges in those areas to ensure that their children are not disadvantaged by living there. As part of this work, we have been enthusiastic partners with Ben Gurion University and particularly with the Stebuker campus. And we have watched and admired your achievements. With your help, we've also created a world-leading business in Alja, algae and its technology at Kibbutz Keturah. We're working with other departments of Ben Gurion University in scientific research, particularly 
biochemistry on other potential breakthrough innovations, and I know that there are many others right across your campus. As I say, this degree should belong also to everyone who has helped make imaginative and constructive grants and to those who have received them and made good use of our support. We believe that ICA has brought real benefits to the north and to the south of the country. And we are now told that despite being of comparatively modest size, our footprints are visible in the regions in which we work. President, Chairman, Rector, fellow honorees, thank you very much for the honor you do me. Professor Donna Shalala, whose career has taken her from the Pierce Corps in Iran to senior government, where as US Secretary of Health and Human Services, she directed the welfare reform process, made health insurance available to millions of children, and raised immunization rates to the highest level in US history. As an academic, she has proactively supported academic freedom and demonstrated her true friendship for Israel. Professor Shalala, we are so grateful for you for accepting our honor. Thank you. Professor Donna Edna Shalala, an outstanding scientist, a leader in academia, in public service, in the Peace Corps, who excelled in each and every one of her various roles. You're a shining example for all of us and a living signboard saying you can do more, you can do better. Thank you. I would like to call upon Professor Donna E. Shalala to please rise and approach the podium. The justifications for granting the degree are found in the scroll which reads, the Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Professor Donna E. Shalala in recognition of a woman of action who has dedicated her life to public service, promoting health and education to bridge social inequalities. In acknowledgement of the leadership and vision of the President of the University of Miami, who has led the institution to remarkable achievements. With respect for an eminent political scientist, a member of the United States National Academy of Sciences, who has mentored generations of students as President of Hunter College and Chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. In appreciation of one of the first volunteers in the Peace Corps, who harnessed her multiple skills and deep commitment for the benefit of humanity while filling key roles in the American government, including U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, and was granted the National Public Service Award, the Nelson Mandela Award for Health and Human Rights, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and many other awards. And in gratitude for her unstinting dedication to the improvement of health services in general and those of children in particular, the promotion of higher education and the enhancement of the quality of life for all members of society by conferring upon her the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The rector will confer the hood. The president will present the scroll. Thinking of the first time I came to Israel, coming home from the Peace Corps, I walked across the Allenby Bridge uh, with my backpack. Uh, the reception was just as warm here in Israel as it is tonight. Madam President, Rector, Chairman Zuckenberg, members of the Board of Governors, Administration, members of the faculty, special guests, old friends from Israel, and my esteemed fellow honorees. I am deeply honored to receive this recognition. I am deeply touched as a Lebanese American to receive this recognition. As an honorary alumna, I hope to grow closer to this superb institution. For more than four decades, Ben-Gurion University of the Degev has served as an oasis of innovation, discovery, and learning. Today, it is a global symbol of excellence and emerging opportunity. In a durable and comprehensive way, Ben-Gurion University has brought new life to the desert. 
As president of the University of Miami, I enthusiastically support future collaborations between our two institutions. It is vital for us to stand beside and with our sister universities, to join our minds and voices and hands in the service of our collective humanity. It is vital for university leaders of the world to condemn any discrimination against Israeli universities and their faculties. A lifetime of dedication to public service has taught me that education and research are the best tools for building the bonds of friendship, mutual respect, and peace among peoples and nations. Therein lie the seeds of a global society that values opportunity, justice, and freedom. There perhaps has never been a greater urgency than there is today for us to fully educate ourselves, both in mind and spirit, to use our learning to change the world. My fellow honorary alumni grasp this. They have committed their considerable energies and talents and resources to foster learning in its many shades and forms. The more we communicate and exchange ideas, the stronger will be the bridges we build between our countries and cultures, community to community. It is wonderful that the symbol of Ben-Gurion University is the Leha Va. This flame represents the courageous and pioneering spirit, the inventive, ri rigorous research that animate this great university. The book of Ezekiel says that a quenchless, fiery flame will scorch what it calls the scrubland of the Negev. You have turned that prophecy on its head. The Lehava of Ben-Gurion University is a beacon that illuminates many paths to better understanding and the stewardship of our precious world. Thank you for this singular honor. I extend my sincerest friendship to all of you. Toda Rahva. Herbert Spencer, English philosopher, social and political theorist, said, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. Sir Bob Geldof, musician and humanitarian, has inspired us with his music, with his personality, and most of all, with his action on behalf of a continent in turmoil, on behalf of people almost left behind by the rest of the world. He has worked tirelessly to raise awareness of world poverty and urge world leader, leaders to find solutions for helping the poorest countries. Sir Bob, your action, our inspiration to all of us, and welcome you. Bob Geldof, you are a unique and amazing person, a very talented art artist who instead of enjoying the limelight of glory, drafted his persona and image for the eradication of hunger in Africa. At Ben Gurion University, we have an African center with similar aims, and I hope we'll be able to join forces in the future to advance this cause. Thank you, too. I now call upon Bob Geldof to please rise and approach the podium. I ask the president and the rector to join the honorary. The scroll reads, the Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Bob Geldof in recognition of a talented singer, songwriter, and actor, and a prominent fighter for human rights and aid for the poor, whose inspiring actions have raised awareness around the world of poverty and famine in Africa. In acknowledgement of his long-standing contribution to the global music industry and his dedication to the noble cause of supporting those in need. In admiration for an exceptional artist who has produced international events, including the notable Live Aid and Live Eight concerts, all the revenues from which were designated to eradicating hunger in Africa and for which he won many prizes and distinctions, including Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire and the Nobel Man of Peace Award. 
in deep appreciation of one who has recruited nations around the world to cancel the debts of the poorest countries and who has focused his many talents on the struggle for fathers' rights in Britain and in honor of a man for whom peace between all people is close to his heart and who devotes his time and efforts to creating a just and better future for coming generations. By conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The rector will confer the hood. The president will present the scroll. This is the third school I visited today. Um, I first have to do my duty and extend the warm greetings of the faculties of Al Quds University to you all this evening. They specifically asked me to do that, so now I extend their uh, warm regards to you. <laughs> Three hours ago, I was talking to some children in Gaza, and now I'm with you. And how intolerable all of this is. I don't have the formal learning or indeed the, um, the expertise of my fellow recipients. But I do know that the freed Roman slave, I'm never sure exactly what his name is. I mean, Martin Gilbert will correct me. I thought it was Euripides, but he's probably not Roman and he probably wasn't a slave and he probably wasn't freed. <laughs> Only the educated are free. And in the near 30 years that I've been going to Africa, it's an absolute truth. With the education that people have received over the years, states have begun to cohere. With the people, the scientists, the doctors that I've met from this country, and particularly their expertise in desert agriculture, the education they've brought have made deserts cohere, peoples cohere, the state in turn cohere around learning and knowledge. And it's only in that that the mind escapes the trap of now, the everyday, the prosaic, dull practicalities of the political moment that will not survive beyond the closing hours of a day that reinvent themselves daily through some notion of history. It will pass these moments that can become existential. And it's only through the curiosity that only learning and knowledge can satisfy that you escape those chains, those chosen chains, to be trapped in a moment of now, to self-impose a siege of the soul, a ghetto of the mind. And how can a people like the people of Israel, so known through history for having been famously accepted into other countries and contributing so hugely, so enormously to those cultures, here's some of them, and so infamously rejected, when the only escape of the people of this country was in the head, was through knowledge and learning, where that's how you earned respect within the Jewish community, by excellence, and when you transferred that to others. Is that not the greatness of this people? And how can the political leaders of this moment be so narrow, been so constricted to not have the enormity of that history, to not have the understanding that it was that huge universe of the mind that allowed them to survive through all those millennia of often infamy? And I've only been here 48 hours, I'm a little tired 
we get up early, we go to bed late. But yesterday when I spoke to the young people dedicated to eliminating the abomination of poverty, that thing that prevents anything, that thing that produces hunger, lack of education, ill health, conflict, corruption, it's only an empirical economic condition. They're simply the symptoms of it. The structures of that condition are, as ever, political and economic. The structures of the problem here today are a trap. It's a trap. The children in Gaza, those elegant people in Al-Quds, the brilliant people here tonight, we can move beyond it. What we see is like in the aridity of the desert that you so brilliantly made bloom. Not just with green, but with this. That definite courage that said it's not just sand, it's a city. What we lack in our leaders is any vision of a future that is acceptable to normal, educated, tactile, sentient, productive, creative and dynamic human beings. I reject the rejectionism of now. And the two sides must be at a point where they must have leaders that understand that one day they must sit down, they must talk, they must tolerate, they must respect, they must understand. I'm allowed to say this because I'm Irish. And all my life I lived amongst murderers and killers who were killing my own people. I was ashamed to be Irish in Britain as the bombs inevitably went off. And yet, it passes. And last week, we saw the Queen of England to my absolute amazement that I should see this in my life, be warmly accepted, welcomed, and emotionally, mutually rejoicing in a past that is best left there. This will happen in this country. It will happen because of institutions like this that bring together the several tribes of this country. And it will happen in the broader reaches of this nation and in this piece of land. And if artists can help to bring that about, good. But I'm certain, I am certain that where it begins is in the expansion of the mind that allows for knowledge, creativity, and forces the politicians of now only to move beyond the narrow, restrictive mentality that prevents peace. I'm deeply honored to be with you tonight. Thank you very much.